What's up, YouTube? It's that time of the year again, Advent of Code 2022. To get you in the mood for the season, let's add, through the power of video editing, a little Santa hat, maybe some holly around the screen, and can we get some Christmas music flip? Oh, we, we can't get Christmas music because of copyright? Well, I'm sure right here, Flip will put a video of himself singing a Christmas song. Right, Flip? Keep the change, you filthy animal. Okay. Very cool. So let's talk about Advent of Code. What is it? Advent of Code is an advent calendar, which just means there's 25 days to it. And each day, a new set of part one and part two of a problem are released. These are fun and interesting programming style challenges. And I think that it's a really great opportunity to try and learn something new in programming. One of the great ways to learn things is not to just sit and watch a tutorial, but is instead to struggle and fight and learn something for yourself. And I think Advent of Code is a great little sort of opportunity to do that. And so for this year, I'm going to try and solve at least as many of the problems that I work on. Probably won't solve all 25 because this time of the year gets quite busy. I'm going to try and solve it in OCaml. OCaml is, as mentioned here, a general purpose, industrial strength, expressive, and safe language. Now, what's interesting for me about OCaml is it's strongly typed, but a lot of it is inferred type. So this is kind of different from some of the things that I've been doing. Like I've been writing a lot of Rust recently, and I have to say what the types are, I have to write them out, all these things. It's a little bit different in OCaml. I think we'll explore that idea more as we go through the solutions. I don't want to say too much about it ahead of time, partially because I'm still learning. You'll learn along with me this month. And also because I want, I want to explore it as we go and not just brain dump right at the beginning. So let's get to the first problem and you'll get to see some of the code that we wrote. Let's go ahead and get to that. And that's a terrible transition. So problem number one for today, each one has a little story. The stories are generally pretty cute. They go over the whole month. I like that a lot. It's one of the fun parts of the project. But the story for today is that the elves are carrying a bunch of food and they all wrote down how many calories the things are that they're carrying. And so we're given a list and each group of these items, so this 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 here, this group of items is one elf carrying that. Another elf, separated by an extra new line here, is carrying just one snack for 4,000 and then we have one carrying two items and three items in one. The problem that we have in the first one is how many calories is the elf carrying who is carrying the most calories? And so in this case, it's the elf who's carrying 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. You add those together, you get 24,000. That's your answer. Obviously for us, our puzzle input is significantly larger than that. So it's not going to be so easy. You could just do this one by hand, but the one that we're given is going to be much larger. So before we actually get to the OCaml code, I want to sort of sketch out the idea of what we're going to do and then we'll work through the code and explain how those two things match up because the syntax i think is quite different from a lot of things you may have seen before if you're not familiar with this so we're given a list of a bunch of different numbers you know a b c d e f etc right and what our job to do is to take these and the way i thought about this problem there's a few different ways you can solve it is that as I'm going to iterate over this list, I'm basically going to put make a list that has A plus B plus C, and then there's going to be another item, and that's D plus E here. Then there's going to be another one, F, and so on, right? And so basically, the algorithm in my head for this is as we iterate over these lines, anytime we find a new line here that's empty, right? So there's nothing here. Then we're going to... Uh, create a new entry in this list. And we're going to, as we're iterating, sum these up, right? So if you think about this sort of like in Python land, right? It's like we're iterating over for val in, you know, vals, something like this, right? We'd say if val equals an empty string, then what are we, we gonna do? We're just gonna insert um, a new uh, a zero at the beginning of the list or at the end of the list, it doesn't really matter. And that's the value that we're going to start appending on for the rest of the items, okay? So that's sort of the general overview of what we're gonna do. And then at the end, you just call max of result and that would get you your uh, item. So maybe you make some result list like this. And as you're iterating over them, you put zero in here. Otherwise, you're gonna add this value to each one. Hopefully that makes sense so far. And that's the general idea of how we're solving it. But OCaml code does not look like this. <laughs> 
Um, and that's part of the part of the fun of adding to code and trying something new. So let's hop on over to that code. Now, before we talk about the code, I want to give a quick shout out to the Primogen. He's got a Discord right now with some people doing Advent of Code together. If you're looking for a small group of people to work on it, head over to that Discord and then join the Advent of Code area. Great place to hang out and talk about the problems. And the other shout out that I have to give is to Anthony uh, and Montero here. Super helpful on stream last night. Taught me a lot about OKML in one day. It's got a cool newsletter about OKML. So if you want to know more about OKML, you can go ahead and subscribe to that email. Anyways, uh, here's here's what we're going to do. The first thing we do is we read the lines of the file. This is just a list of strings. In OKML, you say string list. I don't really know why yet, but that's what you do. And here's our function. This function is called group because it's going to group the items together uh, and sum them as we go through. And you'll notice this looks a little different than the pseudocode that we wrote here, right? Um, there's, not, there's not so much going on here that's super obvious, but... I think with just a little bit of explanation, this syntax will make a bit more sense. So the first thing that you need to know is we bind a new variable called group here, and it's a function. You can tell because it has parameters coming after it. And we say that this function is recursive. You can see that we call group here, here, and here inside of the group function. So we have to tell OKML, yo, this is a recursive function. What are we going to do? This input is the string, uh, is the list of string. And so what we're going to do is we're going to match on this. If you've never seen pattern matching before, this is going to seem like crazy magic, but it's basically like really cool if statements. Okay. So you can think about this in your head as this is like, if this, if this, or, or if this, the great thing about matches is that they have to be exhaustive. So we have covered every possible case of the variables that we have here. So this is really fun. So what is what does this syntax even mean here? This bar is used to denote a pattern. Now we have an empty list. So if this is basically saying is empty list or is input an empty list? If so, return our result. So this is our base case. When you think of re recursive functions, you always got to think what's my base case. My base case here is we're going to pop out the final result, which is the summed values. In this pattern, we're saying if the first element is an empty string, and then I don't care exactly what the rest of the elements are, then we're going to call group again. And this is where we're inserting a zero at the beginning of the list. This colon colon is basically a fancy way of saying basically insert at the beginning of the list, this value. So result is a list of integers, an int list. And so what we want to do is we want to put zero at the beginning of result. Okay. That's that thing that we had just mentioned here, where if we're checking, if val is empty, we're going to insert a zero at the beginning so that now when we go to here, we can keep on adding these numbers. And then for the last match, this is saying there's some calories here and then the rest. So that's still the match that we have here. We're going to call group again with the rest. So same thing we're doing in this pattern, right? See how we're calling group. This is like input with the rest of the input. We're kind of like chunking our way through this, uh, this list. So the trick here, this is kind of, this is kind of the tricky part. That's okay. If you're not sure what's going on here, we're going to call match again. So matches can be nested just like if statements, right? And so now we're going to match result result is sort of like our accumulator of the different integers. I think there's a way you could probably write this with like fold or with just map, but we're just, we're just learning. Okay. We're just learning and we're exploring some ideas. So what do we do here? If result is an empty, an empty array, then we're just going to put whatever the int of string, this just converts string to ints. Okay. Right. And every one of these advent of code problems, you're going to have to turn the string that's in your file into some number, generally speaking. So we do that and now we have a new list and that's what gets passed back to result next time we do group. You might not recognize this because this isn't always how it works, but in OKML, since this is an expression, this returns the result here into this second argument. So it might look like this is just sitting out there doing nothing because maybe if you're used to something like Python, if statements don't return a value. But if you compare to like Rust, ifs are expressions, not statements. The main difference between expression and statement being that expressions return values and statements do not. So this is a match expression. And so we're going to return this value and then put it basically here as the second argument to group. If we don't have an empty list for result, then what we're going to do is we're going to add 
whatever we had on the first element plus the converted value and then append the rest. So let's just draw this out a little bit as a picture. Basically what we're gonna be doing when we match result here is that we either have an empty list and if that's the case, then we just put in our new value, okay? If we have, you know, some val and then rest, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say val plus new value and then the rest. Do you see how this matches? I'm asking you rhetorically, because obviously I can't hear your answer, but you could comment below if you're still following along. That's what this is doing. This takes the first element and then the rest of the list, and it says put this in the first element and then do the rest of the list. And so this, by this sort of trick, it's not really a trick, it's just I think how you would write this in OCaml, you can continue to add to whatever that element is as you're traversing through the items. So as we're going through these items, we're smushing these into the first. And I recognize now, maybe we should say this else. This is kind of like result zero plus equals val, something like that, right? That's basically what we're doing. Once we do that, that's actually basically the whole problem. The only other thing we need to do is we need to get the max value of a list. And so but to do that, we just iterate over the list we once again are going to do this recursively, right? We're going to match on the input. If it's an empty list, then we're going to return our max value, right? That's max of list. That's what we're doing. Otherwise, we call max of list on the rest of the list and we compare which one is bigger, right? And so in this case, this is like, and I'll just draw this out again. If we have something like five, seven, 10, three, like this is our list. What we're doing is in the first one, we're going to be saying, hmm, what's the max of five and zero? So we say, ah, five, zero, the max is five, right? And now what we need to do is we're gonna compare with the remaining items that we have, which is seven, 10, and three, right? So now we're gonna compare seven and five. That's, that's this max statement right here. That's what we're doing when we check this max here. And then once we have seven and five, we're gonna get seven. We call the function again. Now we have 10 and three as our list, right? And so we need to compare seven and 10. That's gonna give us 10. And then in the last one, we have three and 10. We're gonna keep 10. And then now we get to our base case because we have an empty list and our base case is return this current value. And then that will give us the max of the list. When we do that, we can just print that out and voila, we get the max value. For part two of this problem, it's almost exactly the same, except you want to find the top three and sum them together. So to do that, I, I, I know that there's multiple different ways to do this. The easiest way code wise for this is to just call sort and then give the top three values. But sort is generally speaking O of N log N. I was like, well, we can do this in O of N, right? I mean, this is just advent of code, we want to sometimes just solve it in a fast way, and as in a way that runs fast, even if it's not the fastest way to solve it. So how do we do that? Well, this is very similar to our max of list here, but instead of just comparing one max value, we're going to actually compare three. So this is a tuple. A tuple is like a fixed length array. And then and the items inside can be any uh, type that you want them. So in this case, we're gonna pass, we declare a new function, just, just to reiterate since OCaml might be new to some of you, recursive function, max three. We take our input, which as you may know is some list and we're gonna compare them, they're comparable. And we have M1, M2, M3. So this is kind of like max one, max two, max three. What are we gonna do here? When we get to our base case, we're just going to return this tuple. Okay, everyone, everyone's following here, right? So we're saying we're gonna return this tuple of max one, max two, max three. Otherwise, if we have any other values, we're gonna call max three on the rest. This is the same thing we've been doing over and over, basically tail or rest of items, right? And now we're gonna do our complicated match. It looks complicated, but I just thought this was super cool. I wanted to try out writing some more complicated maxes. So what does this actually do? We match on this tuple, M1, M2, M3. So this means in our match cases or patterns, you can write anything you want here. And you use when to add an additional constraint on this matching. So when we say match M1, M2, M3, 
we'd say, okay, I want to match on M1, M2. So this basically binds these to these values. So if we had 10 and seven and five here, then this would now be 10, this would be seven, and we can throw away the last value because we don't care. What we want to know is, is the head of the list greater than M1? If the answer is yes, we're going to return a new tuple that basically shifts all the elements over one and then basically drops this lowest value, right? So if we had put in 15, right? And if we think about this by drawing it again, if you start off with 10, 7, 5 as your M1, M2, M3, right? M1, M2, M3, and your input here is 15, what you're going to see now, if you want the max five values, is you want to return 15, 10, 7, which is like writing head M1, M2. We'll see that sure enough, we put in head M1, M2. Now the second clause is, okay, sure, what if we have head is greater than M2? Well, then we keep M1, we put head in the middle, and then we put M2. So just as another example, if instead we had done, say, 8, now we want our result to be 10, 8, 7, which is M1, head, M2. Then our final sort of matching case here is if head is greater than M3, then we're just going to replace M3. Otherwise, we just keep returning these values. So doing this method, we iterate over the list only one time, and we do a maximum of three comparisons per iteration, basically. And so that means now we have an O of N solution to this problem. Now, is that actually worth it? Should you just call sort? Probably you should just call sort, probably, but it's advent of code and my encouragement to you is hopefully you get a chance to learn something new, try something different and enjoy yourself. That's, that's one of the favorite things for me for advent of code. If you like this video, if you want to see more of it, please let me know. Give it a like, comment, share it, send it to someone. Send it to someone who's been telling you that you need to try OCaml and say, look what my favorite YouTuber is doing. Whatever you want to do. And ultimately, make sure you're having fun and hopefully you enjoy this. Let me know what you think via the algorithm. Thanks, everybody. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.